Welcome back everybody to another Moto Bob Vlogs video and I'm in Barcelona today on the launch of the BMW CE04 just waiting now for someone on a GS or something to come back and do some video I think they've got a camera on the front and the back and I'll ride behind them and then in front of them and then cut it into my content but this morning we went up over the mountains um, at the back of Barcelona I think we'll do a little bit of that on this video as well as we head to our lunch stop and yeah it's been super interesting to ride a bike like this doing both city work but also some of those twisty roads I'll explain a little bit about how it performs in both scenarios as we go along all right here we go here's my guy straight behind So that was the run behind and then we'll be alongside closer okay i've never seen that before that's so cool yeah he's got um three gopros one on the side one front one back and then a, a little monitor on his dash there with all three shots so he can see them which is excellent and then now he's uh, just following me so do my best riding. All right, that's me done on the uh, shots there. So while someone else is having their go, I'll give you a little walk around. So here we are, I'm on one of the gray bikes. You can also get it in a white finish. There's one over here. And it comes pretty plain, look. Just white bodywork. Um, but you can also get these sticker kits where you can get a little orange saddle but also yeah these decal kits I guess and some of them even have a sticker kit on the rear wheel which is a disc these ones don't have it but you can get some sort of decorative stuff on there but overall it does make for a striking looking machine if you want to call it that and uh, yeah, lots of little modern touches like the orange windscreen. You can get a full taller windscreen, um, but we aren't trying those out today, unfortunately. But overall, it's super comfy. I mean, you can see how much wind protection you've got there. It's a wide thing. And then you've got sort of mid floorboards there with the option to put your feet a little further forward. Very cool is that it's got this helmet compartment. My lid will only go in this showy GTR2, so a sports touring helmet. It'll only go in sideways, but most lids I think will fit uh, the right way up. And then you can also put a charging cable in there, I suppose, if you want to keep it with you. Really interesting seeing the bike at the presentation last night, just how low everything is in terms of weight. You know, the battery is all under the floor there. The motor's here. So this is empty, and then you've got a steel frame and bench seat some electronics in here same at the front but really the heavy heavy stuff is down low and it's 230 kilograms so not a particularly light bike but you, i don't know people always say oh, you don't really feel it you say the weight disappears when you get moving it's it's genuinely it doesn't feel like a 230 kilogram bike it's very long as well um, I think the wheelbase is 1,675 millimeters, so longer than most motorcycles, you know, regular motorcycles. A GS is something like 1,570 or something, probably about 10 centimeters shorter in the wheelbase. Um, but a bike like this is all about stability and comfort, and um, it still feels agile. But yeah, it's quite long. I mean, that's pretty common for big scooters like this. Let me just show you the startup procedure before we get on the way to the mountain roads. So switch on, it's keyless. The massive TFT dash boots up. Hold the brake, press the starter, and you're off. Now, one feature that I really, really like on this scooter slash bike is that... The side stand actually activates a parking brake because, of course, you can't leave it in gear, being electric. So if you parked on an incline, you obviously want to have something to stop it rolling away. You know, there are certain bikes like Honda's DCT bikes that do have uh, 
handbrake as well somewhere on the you know in the cockpit but it's quite easy to forget perhaps so this side stand solution is brilliant and i think we might see that on more bikes in future i don't know why no one's come up with that before i suppose it makes the side stand assembly a little bit more complex and expensive but it's very neatly done in fact the whole bike is neatly done there's a 12 volt down here for your uh, heated clothing we've got heated grips and heated seat as accessory options there's a phone stash here that's splash proof it locks i think as well so it's like centrally locked as is the storage compartment where you can put your helmet and also it's what they call actively ventilated which means it's got a fan and so if your phone's charging there's a usb c uh, socket in there it won't get too hot or overheat Woo! but i think some of the functionality and integration with the tft dash is done over bluetooth and wi-fi i think a mix of the two for the navigation so you could feasibly still have your phone in your pocket and uh, that's you know if you didn't want to use the stash now quickly on the range it's 8.9 kilowatt hours the battery in this bike so they say it's good for 130 kilometers of city riding or about 80 miles and that seems to be the case from what we've done so far today it's absolutely mad to see it not coming down at all really the battery level when you're coming down off the mountain hills and unfortunately it's a little bit blocked here with my gopro but you get a almost like what you'd have uh, with a rev meter on a petrol bike but it's showing whether you're using power or regenerating encourages you to ride a little bit more sensibly if your battery's going down and then you've got a choice of three riding modes of standard so eco which has maximum regeneration so it feels almost like very heavy engine braking well that has a, a gentle throttle curve as well uh, you've got rain which has less of that regen to stop it sort of like locking up when you're off the throttle and also the gentle throttle and then road which is minimal uh, regen again or less regen let's say but a snappy throttle application now if you do want to ride it a little harder then you can upgrade to the dynamic riding mode as a an option you know and that gives you full throttle power full throttle response uh, like the road riding mode but also the full engine braking that you get in eco and so you can kind of ride it a bit like um this idea of a one pedal car now where you press the throttle to go and as you release it, it engine brakes and you don't really need to use the brakes so much it's a little bit like that when you are really barreling into a corner you're still going to want to use the brakes which are pretty good by the way but certainly around town even if you're riding at a fairly snappy pace you can pretty much just make do with yeah just using it on the throttle in terms of other rider aids as well we've got asc so automatic stability control which is their name for traction control and that works both for woo, these things are fast it's only 42 horsepower 62 newton meters of peak torque i think but it feels fast 2.6 seconds they were saying for 0 to 30 ish miles per hour which is absolutely what counts in and around town and uh yeah so we've got traction control that works for both um if the rear wheel spins up if it's a slippy surface obviously it'll intervene and uh, reduce the power to the back wheel but also it works for the regenerative engine braking type thing uh, so that if you again we're on a slippery surface and you shut the throttle quickly if the rear wheel starts to lock up then it kind of works like um, engine torque control or drag torque control they call it in their petrol bikes you've got an option for a dynamic traction control so lean sensitive cornering uh, traction control that's an upgrade and it's the same with the abs so abs is standard and then abs pro which is lean sensitive as an optional extra headlights so you get um led lighting all around you can see these integrated brake lights and uh indicators at the rear there really smart looking they do come on as well when you're engine braking because it's more severe you slow down quite quickly so they work both with the brake levers but also yeah when you close the throttle and uh, they look really good and it looks good at the front end too um, but you've also got headlight pro i think it's called as an option so cornering sensitive headlights 
And then you've also got the option of the hello and goodbye animations in the lighting that you can get on bikes like the 1250GS and stuff. And uh, I don't know if they're particularly useful or just a flashy thing, but you can get the follow me home feature. So when you turn the bike off, you can hit the headlight button and it will stay on for a bit while you put your keys in the door or open the garage or something. So uh, that one has more of a practical application that makes sense to me. Anyway, I was originally talking about range and well, I think I was trying to say, I was trying to get round to saying that 80 miles doesn't sound like a great deal but I think they've intentionally designed it like that. They didn't want to fill it with batteries and make it super heavy. Realistically, when I was riding in London, I had a Triumph Street Twin and I'd commute into work when I was still at the BBC before going full-time on YouTube. And um, what, I did 10 miles maybe, and it, it takes so long in heavy city traffic to do any distance, and that that's still a good half hour of commuting, maybe more, doing, 40 miles each way I think is getting towards the max of what people are realistically going to do commuting in and around town. Anything longer than that where you're doing a lot of A road and motorway to get into town in the first place and still at the moment a petrol bike is going to be your best bet probably. But I think 80 is enough. I think it's decent and uh, today's kind of proven that. We've done quite a lot of riding and I'm still on 50k of range. And I'm on 58% of battery. Now that obviously doesn't equate up to like the claimed 130 um, total range. But that's because it's trying to predict that, that range figure based upon the current riding style. And I was just on and off the throttle a lot coming out of town there and going uphill a bit. But now we're going downhill. I'd expect that figure to start to creep up again. Now charging, it comes with the domestic plug for your market essentially. So you can... When you get one of these from the dealer you can plug it in at home and it'll take four hours 20 to do a full charge which if you're like can i ride it for 80 miles charge it up and then go for another 80 mile ride you know that's quite a big weight but realistically if you're commuting and you garage it overnight what a view by the way it probably looks like nothing on the gopro but that is absolutely stunning you can see sagrada familia the uh, cathedral still being worked on with a big crane over it down the middle there and then just the rest of the city i can't believe people actually live here like what a place anyway what was i saying yeah charge it up overnight in your garage and obviously four hours 20 is unless you're getting very little sleep uh you know it should be fine to charge overnight and be ready to go the next morning if you are doing i don't know more than that or you want the ability to charge when you're out and about and do it a bit quicker uh, you can buy a fast charger upgrade and that's 850 quid so it starts to push the price of this up quite a lot it's already 11,700 so this is a premium scooter product um but yeah another 850 on top and you're getting up to what 12 and a half grand and a bit more that gives you a one hour 45 total charge time um, but more realistically, I think they were quoting from 20%. You're probably not going to run it right down to zero. And they say 20% up to 80, um, so that's 60% of the charge, is done in the 45 minutes. So that's a really good real world figure, I think. And uh, yeah, if you do have a workplace that's near a charging point or, uh, you know, there are some convenient to you, then that's pretty good. This is one of the first electrics I've ridden that has kind of like fully convinced me that this is like better than a petrol scooter. I mean, I'm not evaluating this bike from a from a proper sort of sporty handling perspective. It's still fun. Like it's fun to ride on twisty roads and stuff. But realistically, it's going to be, you know, just going in and out of town and blasting away from the lights. And uh, I just don't know why you would want a big petrol bike where you have to fill it up as well like if you can just charge this at home every night it's so quiet and clean and uh, pleasant and smooth to ride and it's not hot as well when you're sat in traffic the tech's great it's comfy i just don't really see the downsides of it whereas out of town obviously there are loads of downsides of trying to tour and ride sportily and ride adventure bikes if they're electric 
the range and charging question you know it's just prohibitive for proper good fun big days out on the bike uh, but i don't feel like that riding this bike today in this setting it's a tool for a job they've designed it specifically for that and i think they've made a heck of a good job of it just so many nice little touches and you know a lot of thoughtful design and also i love that they made something so bold and different looking and uh you know something that's a real statement they said uh, i asked them last night i was like i like the look of it i'd buy that over you know a standard looking scooter but what about the people that do buy middleweight or large scooters are they ready for something that effectively looks like a bit like a spaceship you know it looks a bit sci-fi the design director or head of design at bmw motor rad said well look it's uh it's something that we wanted to be aspirational um in the same way that people buy like a porsche taycan or whatever it's called the electric porsche or even a tesla to some extent it's not a practical measured decision it's something that is a bit of a statement piece and something you'd be proud to own and i think they've gone for the same vibe with this try and make something that looks impressive and futuristic and that's a real that's got a bit of a sense of pride to own really enjoyed the presentations last night sometimes on launches there's not a great deal to say if it's an incremental update to an existing bike or um, you know just a standard bike with not a great deal of new tech or anything but when it's something like this you really get to see some interesting stuff and uh, some good questions coming up from the journalists and yeah just like the fact that the battery is air cooled so the battery's underneath but it's in a case with fins and uh, it's that that battery case is underneath the bike so when you see these bikes banking over you get quite a good view of it uh, but yeah the little fins obviously help to keep the battery nice and cool under there yet the motor i believe is uh, liquid cooled and that is hooked up to a radiator at the front so many scooters here you can see over there absolutely loads of them everywhere all lined up and then much like that guy there just having a look at these bikes you know it's a big scooter culture here and a lot of people have been stopping to look when we've stopped for photos and taking pictures of the bikes with their phones and uh, i think there'll be a lot more interest in these probably in europe than the uk uh, but yeah it's always good to see what that reaction's like but generally people are really intrigued by these anyway yeah that battery uh, case that i was just talking about the team that make those that weld the aluminium uh, previously they or you know probably still currently they weld the aluminium fuel tanks for the regular petrol bikes and they've just adapted and started doing <laughs> battery cases which is just seems like a heck of a coincidence that it's a completely different energy source yet uh, ultimately it's the same team with the same or similar manufacturing techniques making the the case for it also interesting is the um you know the way that they've sourced some of these parts so the battery is the same as you'll find on their ix which is like a bit of an electric crossover suv type thing i think that has 11 cells this just takes one of those cells and then puts it in this bespoke case and the motor is from the two series hybrid so they've lifted it out of that and then obviously probably had to adapt it a little bit for this application but a lot of that car tech is um coming in here god i love barcelona we're at the harbor trying to find somewhere for lunch well when i say trying to find somewhere i'm sure they've booked somewhere and then i think a couple of streets back here you've got the beach i'm going to be filming my review while everyone else eats lunch i stuffed myself full of sandwiches at the coffee stop so that i wouldn't be hungry so that i could get a full hour recording my youtube review i wonder if i can get right down to the beach that would be pretty awesome generally super impressed with this uh don't really have a bad word to say about it after riding it so far today i thought the helmet wasn't gonna fit but yeah one of them showed us if you turn it sideways it'll go in on previous um bmws with a phone stash my big iphone 11 pro max in a case didn't fit but they've changed it on this bike and so it does now fit easily brakes are good suspension's fine seats a little firm but there is a comfort seat option that's heated and obviously you're not going to be doing like five six hours in the saddle at a time so for little city stints <laughs> careful how you say that um yeah it's absolutely fine probably the big thing is the price but they know it's going to be like a like they say an aspirational type thing that perhaps those 
early adopter city types um, might not be as price sensitive as the meat of the scooter market and so while it's still relatively new and you know still probably fairly expensive to produce and the scale's not quite there they're probably accepting that yeah it is going to be a a premium priced product and we're not going to sell huge volumes and that's why we styled it up as this sort of luxury premium hyper techy kind of package sort of makes sense doesn't it oh yeah another thing from the talk they were saying as well like if you think about a traditional big four five hundred or even up to 650 scooter like all these ones parked up over here you've got the engine mounted on the swing arm at this side uh big exhaust on this side then especially with modern emissions they're big and then you've got to have an air box and uh you know fuel and it makes the back of the bike very wide and so for filtering and agility uh you know it makes it a bit of a beast Whereas this is slender as anything at the back, it, it doesn't get wider. In fact, the, the widest point is pretty much your feet and your ankles. <laughs> Got a bit of TC kicking in there. Yeah, it does put a big grin on your face when you give it full throttle. Anyway, I think we're just about at lunch. So thank you so much for watching. And it's been a while since I last posted on this channel. I, I did film a couple of things, but I messed them up and just had to delete them unfortunately um but yeah back at it hopefully now that we've got you know on the right side of the short days and weather hopefully uh yeah plenty more vlogs coming soon got some great bikes coming up in the garage so uh yeah let me know how you're all doing down in the comments and uh i'll see you soon